Yo, so what's happening my people? It's your boy Chance Jollibee, aka Smooth, back with another video. So another episode of The Shy, Season 6, Episode 11, Saints and Sinners. Yo, this was a, it was a short episode, man. I think this episode was only like 46 minutes, man. But that's cool, because it's less for me to have to talk about. But this was like... It was like a trifling episode. They had a lot of little truths came out. The story... The story moved along. In certain aspects, we found out certain things. But it wasn't like... At least it was more lighthearted. It was more relationship-based and family-based. It wasn't like people get murdered and stuff, man. So it wasn't no threats of death this episode. So that was good for a change. But anyways... So it starts off, man, and we see Papa Jake Bakari dating uh, Pastor Z's church. That's Kenya's father and stuff. And, like, everybody in there is, like, kind of trifling, man. Like, the pastor's trifling. The first lady is trifling. We're going to see why she trifling later on. We see a uh, homeboy. I don't know his name, but a uh, dude's man. Like, he hollers at Kenya. Like, he might get a date with her and stuff. I'm like... I don't know how in in then Papa kind of sees her walk off with him. Hey, Papa, you can't be mad at that. You push that girl away. I think she was a good good girl, man. Like, yeah, she had a baby and stuff that might be too much for him at the time and stuff, but he did her wrong. He ain't had to do her the way that he did her. And then being who Papa is and how he always trying to guide people and but he was going through a hard time in his life. Because his daddy did just get murdered. Like his daddy didn't die of natural causes or anything. It wasn't no uh, no warnings beforehand. He couldn't brace himself. Like he had just fought with his daddy and his daddy died. So I could see why he, he was in a dark place. But he did do her wrong. She still didn't deserve what he did to her. But anyways. So him and Keisha, they finally getting along. Like they finally didn't... Uh, Got their groove on a little bit and stuff, you could, you could say. So, I don't know if that's going to be short-lived and stuff. You know how they get with each other. is like, uh... Hopefully, if the writing changes, it can look better. But as far as how their relationship has been going, I don't know about y'all. I've been wanting them to break up because it's just like, eh. Uh, but anyways. So, we seen Leon... At the end of in the last episode, so what was his name? His name was something Lafayette. Uh, but anyway, so Leon's father, I, I mean Leon, he ends up being Rob's father. So that's who he is. I didn't know Leon was that tall either. Like he played basketball movies and stuff. I thought he had like height on. He the same height as his Shumper. And Shumper like six. At the shortest six five, but I could have swore he was like six seven. But he might be six five. But shit, I didn't knew Leon was that tall because he. Looking, looking the shump right in the eyes. So, hey, and wherever shy at, like at this time, because this is like seems like the next morning or whatever. You know, shy that went over that night in in the offer to do the locks or whatever. And you can do the locks in the morning, but I guess they didn't want to introduce that yet. But uh, yeah, if if the timelines were correct, but maybe it was different days or something. Like as far as maybe maybe this episode took place a couple days later or something. You never know. But it would have been interesting if Shad would have came from downstairs, uh, from upstairs or something. And who is this? <laughs> but anyways, uh. Like I said this earlier on, like uh, Kenya, Kenya mama, she wants Jake. Because she followed him on the IG and stuff like that. Like, we're going to get into that later on. Uh, how the hell is Gemma getting all that? Like, Britney, Britney has gave us some money and stuff like that. But Britney's money is ran out. I think she got a little bit more money from Homeboy. But I'm like, is she giving... Is Britney giving Gemma all that money to get a private chef and, and have an apartment laid out in this and that? Like, hmm... Then Britney shows up. She's very charming. I give that to her. I give that to her. She's very charming. So, hmm. Yeah, like, uh, Pops, he can kind of see the chemistry. And homegirl, uh, Jake's 
not Jay, I'm, I'm all over the place with the names. But Gemma's uh, stepmother, <laughs> all right there, and I don't remember her name. She she's kind of like pushing it. She I guess she wants Gemma to experiment and see what she wants. Uh, but anyways, and uh, uh, Emmett, Emmett and Darnell they have a father son meet up or whatever. They they playing laser tag, and another of his brother showed up. I've been talking about that like. Darnell got all these kids. Where all the other kids at? And one of them finally shows up. And Emmett is, he's mad as hell. Like, he's incensed and stuff. I'm like, why are you so mad? Like, you got brothers and stuff, man. Like, that's not... You have kids. A bunch of kids that you want the brothers and everybody to get by. But he's... And I, just, I don't know, because he grown, man. Like, uh, Emmett got to be... Pushing, well, no, I want to say pushing 30, but Keisha just not graduated, so, yeah, so, uh, so, uh, nah, they not pushing 30, maybe in real life, but he still should be grown enough to whiz his brother, that shouldn't bother him that much, but I don't know, you know, they, they've been had a bad relationship in their lives, and Darnell was late in his life and stuff, but, eh. I think Emmy kind of being a bitch this episode, <laughs> but that's just my thoughts. Why is Pastor Z so hated? Like he goes to to Papa's church, Papa's mother's church now, and go and bring items and stuff, and he bring Papa some things. And like, yeah, I, I think he is trifling. He, yeah, he's like a, a crooked pastor, but like he's like he like super hated. Like, but. I answer my own question. Why is he so hated? Because he crooked. He crooked. He's a crook. So his flock, he's all about the ties and stuff like that and fattening his pockets. Like, I thought that's what they always doing, to be honest. But anyways, uh, my boy Shad. Like, he don't have a big uh, presence in this episode, but we see, like, he been laying the smack down on Alicia and stuff, so I... Ugh. <laughs> Laying a smack down. But anyways, so she's uh trying to introduce him into bigger ideas and things like that. So she she gives gives him with this jacket. This was for somebody else. Like we seen that Leon, I'm pretty sure that's who that was for. We seen Leon is like six five to six seven. You giving his clothes to uh to Shad. That shit is going to the flow. I'm like, Shad is looking like Blade. Like, if you somebody give you a gift, you accept it. Ooh, this leather jacket. That leather jacket big to the motherfucker. God damn. Looking like Blade and shit. But anyways, this shit offers him a gig, head of security. And it's weird. Be, be, here he, he can't have any guns. He a felon and stuff. But she says she's gonna pull some some strings for him to be able to carry. But he went to jail for things that they did in his life. But him getting out of jail, he never really seemed like a tough guy. Like upon him getting out of jail and stuff, like you haven't really. See, for him to be like secure, having security or something like he just it just don't look like his security secure or a stepper or something just don't seem like shy. But hey, he 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 had a different life, so he hasn't always been the character that we see on the episode and stuff. But anyways, so Alonzo Lafayette, uh, he wants Rob to testify. In the trial and stuff. He's going to be trying to go against Duda and stuff. He's going to be uh, uh, representing Victor and stuff. And, and Rob is like, man, fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Like, they brothers in the shy and stuff. Like, hey, like, this the only reason you want to meet up with me. You was going. You was an absentee father and stuff. And, like, I'm in this place. This is where I live. I ain't still snitching. Like, you... <laughs> Against one of the biggest gangsters in the city and stuff. He got a whole crew and stuff. Man, you trying to... You're going to really mess me up. And then just like 
brothers, we we normally don't do that type of shit. And what what incentive does he have to like? He doesn't have well. Does he? He ain't got no case. He ain't got no case on him. So he ain't really got no uh like Victor kind of has a little incentive to testify, but will Victor even testify? I don't know. We'll see. The first lady, we get back to her. Yo, she fine as hell. Like, I don't know if that's Kenya Mama. Kenya Mama, hey, hey. But she trifling, man. Like, grown ass lady. She gotta be in the 40s and stuff, man. Man, she pray, she prays on this young brother. Like Jake. But I don't, he always been a little ladies man and stuff, man. Hey, she he gets some more sloppy toppy. He do the nasty and stuff. And then she like, what is gonna take for me to see you again? Pray on it. Like that. I, I ain't gonna lie, that was slick. That was a slick little line. But I'm like, man, that's that's a little try. That was trifling. That was trifling, man. Like, but hey, I, I ain't too mad at him. I'm. I, I I can't say that. I can't say that because I was I was a uh, I can't be a hypocrite. Because I was mad at her Gemma for messing with Britney and stuff, like kissing on her and stuff like that, and flirting all the time. So, I gotta I gotta be fair in, in Jake Wrong, but we're gonna see later on the episode. At least he's honest, he's honest. So, uh, they got the family dinner. Emmett, like I said earlier, man, like he hate his brother, man. Then Darnell asked him if he could get a job and stuff. And, like, man, I don't even know that nigga. And his mama, Jada, even said, like, what about your kids and uh, you want them to, and Keisha to accept them? Yeah, you got a point. But then whenever he went to the table and the, bro the little young brother, like he praying at the table and stuff and he seems like he's so happy to meet his brother. Emmett is still on some fuck shit, man. Like, I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like, man. Emmett's supposed to be a little bit more mature than that. He's supposed to be a little bit more mature than that, man. And like I said, man, Jake always been bluntly honest. So him and Jimmy is kicking it and stuff, and he's cheesing at his phone like, uh, you got to be honest, who you texting and stuff? Nah, man, you got to be honest if we're going to be together, all right? Yo, uh, first lady came, I fucked. God damn, you could have been a little bit uh lighter than that. Like, how I'm going to lighten the blow on that? And I know you've been wanting to fuck with Brittany. You ain't, uh, we kissed and stuff. Like, look, I don't know if I want to, I'm 18. I don't know if I want to be with you for the rest of my life. And if you want to fuck with me for the rest of your life and stuff, like, man, we, let's keep our options open. So, I think they boxer, like, he just pushed her away. He pushed her right into Britney's arms. So, that's pretty much what that situation is about to be. Uh, Kenya, Kenya is out with old boy, man. Like, I, I thought homeboy was gay. I ain't going to lie. Because, like, the way he gave Jake the money and stuff, I'm like, he looked like he was pushing up on Jake. Like, it was kind of funny. But homeboy, he, he has, he talks his aspirations and his plans to be the man. And you need a you need a cold mind and a cold heart. My mind cold, but my heart ain't cold yet. He got homegirl smoking weed and stuff like that. But she ain't already had a baby and stuff, so she ain't no saint. And her daddy is trifling, her mama trifling. So maybe she trifling too. But I don't really like Kenya out with old boy. He's a bad influence. Uh... But Corey, he got his journal and stuff. I'm against the end of the episode because, like, that's that's the way the episode ends. But anyway, Jim about to cross over to the dark side, man. Like, Brittany is putting that smack down on him. She putting that, that old, um, that old riz on her and stuff, man. Like, yo, we can't cross that line. If you have sex with a female, it's going to change your life. Oh, really? Really? So, hey, it's something to it. Something to it, like, I I don't know. My sex ain't never changed nobody's life. Not that I know of. <laughs> so, hey, but then women be doing something. They, they do it like, I, I need, need to take some, take some notes, man. Shit, take some notes like this. Shit, what, what y'all doing? What y'all doing? Hey, I think I be doing my thing, but I ain't doing it like that. But anyways, uh, Papa gets a big opportunity. Like, homeboy Pastor Z offers him to be his full-time assistant. He gonna have to leave, uh, he gonna have to leave Smokies and stuff, but man, it's like he turning his back on his mother and stuff. And his mother needs him at this time, like she's left with the church to herself, and like for him to do that, like I know he wants to learn, he wants to be bigger, he wants a bigger flock and all that, but like man, you gonna leave your father's church 
and you gonna go to the competition and stuff, like, that's, and leave your mother stranded, that's kind of some fuck shit, Papa. That's kind of some fuck shit. Anyways, in the end of the episode, so what I want to say about Bakari and stuff, man, like, Bakari, he did his, he's trying to get with the classes and stuff, man, they gave him a journal to write in. If you've been watching the shot for a long time and stuff, you look back and Bakari said like one of his dreams or something. He was talking to Lene, I think. And she he was like, uh, I think it was like, what would you want to do with your life and this stuff? He was like, I might write a book. And homeboy, like he writes in his journal. And you would think like a like a hood brother and stuff, like he would be kind of be literate or whatever while he in the streets because like he uh his school and this stuff. But man, he a good ass writer. Like the the things that he writes in his journal, I don't like him uh admitting to murder, but like it's very real. It seems profound. Like in he's very honest and, and stuff with it, and he like man, I don't, I just, I don't want to die and stuff, man. Like he putting everything out there, and I think if homeboy gets a chance to read this, he's gonna be like, man, you you gifted, man. Like. The 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 uh the the tellings of like a good writer and stuff is the honesty and their their ability to portray their lives in an honest realm and be having something to say. And so he has lived a life worth telling. So Bakari, yeah, I think he actually can have a future in this if he ends up living. It could be a possibility he can do his journal and like have a best-selling novel and probably get killed or something like. But we gonna see how this how this season goes. But I, I like this episode, man. It was it was lighter than some of the episodes. Like I don't need them dodging bullets every episode. Like I can see if it's more so like power. I want to see bullets, but like shy can be a little lighter sometimes. But. I enjoyed it. What y'all thought about this episode, man? Like, comment, subscribe. It's going to be great. It's the most hated, man. I'll let you boy.